Hello and welcome to Learning with Lisa. In today's video, we are learning about the polar habitats. We will find out about the animals and plants that live there and the problems they face. Keep a lookout for the Arctic Tern throughout the video and tell me at the end if it appears in two places. Let's start by finding out what polar habitats are. Polar habitats are very cold, icy and windy places. They are found in just two locations, the Arctic and Antarctica. Unlike most places, they have just two seasons, summer and winter. But even in the summer, it is still cool. In the summer, it is light for 24 hours a day at the very top of the North and South Pools. Imagine going to bed when the sun is still shining. In the winter, it is dark for 24 hours a day. There are masses of ice at the very tips of the North and South Pools. These are always frozen and are called polar ice caps. Let's look at the Arctic first. The Arctic is found at the northernmost part of Earth. It is home to the North Pole and also includes parts of Canada, United States of America, Iceland, Greenland, Norway, Sweden, Finland and Russia. In the winter, temperatures can drop below minus 50 degrees Celsius. And during the summer, the temperatures fall between 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. That's a bit like winter in the United Kingdom. About 4 million people live here and very few live in the icy region. Many live on the mainland where it is warmer. You know that not many animals live in both the Arctic and Antarctica. Let's find out about the animals and plants that make the Arctic their home. Whales, polar bears, Arctic foxes, seals, walruses, Arctic owls and reindeer can all be found living in these harsh conditions. They have adapted to be able to survive the very cold weather. Many have very thick fur or feathers to keep themselves warm. Did you know that a polar bear's fur is not white? It is translucent and just appears white due to reflection. Its skin underneath is in fact black. I bet that surprised you. Some animals also burrow under the ground or stay in snowbanks to protect themselves from the windy and very cold weather. During November or December, female polar bears give birth to their cubs in snow dens. They choose to do this to make sure their new family is protected from the harsh environment. Cubs are only about 30 centimetres long when they are first born. That's about the length of a ruler. They weigh about the same as a guinea pig. They stay in the snow den for about four to five months. A large part of the Arctic is covered in tundra. This means the ground is mostly frozen and only thaws just enough to allow short grasses, mosses and a few other plants to grow. Bearberry, Arctic poppy and cotton grass are typical plants. Trees are unable to grow here because the tree roots are unable to go as far down into the ground as they need to because the ground is frozen. Let us now find out about the plants and animals found in Antarctica. Antarctica is the Earth's southernmost continent and is home to the South Pole. 
98% of it is covered in thick ice. It's even colder than the Arctic. Seals and whales live in the southern ocean surrounding the continent and a variety of different penguins call Antarctica their home too. These animals have also adapted to survive the harsh conditions. Emperor penguins are the tallest of all the penguins and survive by eating fish and squid. They have two layers of feathers to help protect them from the icy winds. They also huddle close together to keep each other warm. The albatross is a very large seabird that spends most of its time in flight over Antarctica. It has a wingspan of up to 3.5 metres and survives on jellyfish and fish. As like the Arctic, trees are not able to grow on Antarctica. It is too windy and too cold. Antarctica is considered a desert because it gets very little rain. It's an ice desert. Lichen, moss, Antarctic hair, grass and Antarctic pearl wart grows here, especially around the penguin colony. Sadly, both the Arctic and Antarctica are under threat. Let's find out why. The polar regions are suffering from pollution. Rubbish that is thrown into the sea sometimes ends up there. Things like plastic bags and bottles might be eaten by sea creatures, which can cause them to become very ill. Wildlife might also get tangled up in the plastic and cause serious injury. Plastic that ends up in the sea takes a long time to break down. Animals in the Arctic and Antarctica are also at risk from climate change caused through global warming. Things like factories, cars and lorries give out a gas called carbon dioxide. This can cause the climate to get warmer. In recent years, higher temperatures have caused the amount of sea ice to decrease and get thinner. Now many parts of the Arctic is without ice for two months longer than it used to be. This is very bad news for animals such as seals and polar bears who live on the edge or just under the surface of the ice. Polar bears depend on the ice when they are hunting. They wait at the ice edge for seals to surface or wait near seal breathing holes and then grab them when they appear. But as the ice disappears, the habitats are getting smaller. Animals are also affected in Antarctica. The emperor penguin has become threatened and their numbers are expected to decrease. This is due to the rising temperature melting the ice, that is their breeding ground. The more the ice melts, the less habitat there is for them to meet up and to breed. So what can we do to help? We need to do things that will save energy so we are not putting more fossil fuels like carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Try remembering to switch off lights when they are not needed. Using less electricity means burning less fossil fuels. Remind adults to dust light bulbs too as this saves energy and less electricity will need to be used. Remember to recycle as much as you can. Paper is made from trees. We need to keep as many trees as we can because they help stop so much carbon dioxide from going into the atmosphere. Use both sides of paper and then put it in the recycling box so it can be turned into something else. Have you ever considered buying second-hand clothes? Making new clothes needs lots of water and energy. Why not ask an adult if you can plant a tree? We know that trees take in harmful carbon dioxide and can help make the air fresh and clean. Consider walking or riding a bike if your journey is short. The less cars there are on the road, 
the less traffic pollution there is. On cold days, why not wear extra clothes rather than put on the heating? This too saves energy. What do you do with things that are broken? Why not try mending them instead of buying new? The less things we buy, the less fossil fuels will be released from factories making them. It's now time for our quiz. Let's see how much you can remember. Where do you find polar bears? Antarctica? The Arctic? Or both places? Polar bears are in the Arctic. What colour is the skin of a polar bear? White? Black? Pink? A polar bear's skin is black. What is the biggest threat to polar bears? Penguins? Temperatures getting colder, temperatures getting warmer. The answer is the temperature getting warmer. Where do you find penguins? Antarctica? The Arctic? Or both places? The answer is Antarctica. What is the largest penguin in Antarctica? King penguin? Queen penguin? Emperor penguin? The answer is Emperor penguin. Which animal is often found in both Antarctica and the Arctic? Snowy owl? Arctic tern? Albatross? The Arctic tern is found both in the Arctic and Antarctica. Which place is the coldest, iciest and windiest? Antarctica? Arctic? Both. The answer is Antarctica. Which of these could help save the polar bears? Using a car? Switching off lights, putting the heater on. The answer is switching off lights when not needed. The Arctic tern appeared in both the Arctic and Antarctica throughout my video. This is because it's one of the few animals that is found in both places. We've now finished learning all about polar habitats. There are lots more habitats to find out about. Keep a lookout for my other videos. If you haven't already, you might want to consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss out on all my new videos. Thank you for watching. Bye bye for now. Bye.